Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining me today. To briefly introduce myself, my name is Connor Simmons, a member of the product team here at Ionic, where I work closely with our products and services in the enterprise application development space. You can find me at my socials listed on the screen here. Turning back to the topic at hand, though, mobile DevOps and why it's so hard. I'm especially excited to run through this with you today because I've experienced these problems firsthand. As a former mobile application developer and software engineering leader, I face the challenges of mobile DevOps on a day-to-day -day basis. Most software development teams are familiar with the concept of CI-CD, the intersection of development and operations that empowers teams to ship high-quality software faster. It's about automating the software build and deployment process. DevOps focuses on improving collaboration between product managers, developers, operations, and even security stakeholders. It's about building that culture and really emphasizing it to ensure the delivery of software is as successful as possible. But the fact of the matter is, is that most software uh, enterprise teams aren't that great at this. In fact, according to Forrester, the average enterprise team is shipping their apps just four times per year, if not less. And this is a problem, right? If we're not shipping our apps frequently, we're not learning from our users, we're not finding critical bugs, and we're not adding value for our customers. This is especially true in mobile apps. So then, what is mobile DevOps? Well, mobile DevOps is a form of DevOps specifically tailored to the needs of mobile application development, including native builds, integrations, and methods of publishing and updating applications. Today, most mobile development teams often repurpose their existing DevOps pipeline for mobile, or trudge through the manual process of building and shipping a mobile app. Long term, both of these solutions can cause slowdowns in the mobile app release process and cause significant delays in shipping new features to users. Placing a focus on mobile DevOps means organizations can ship more frequently, getting features in front of customers faster and easier than ever. So think about it. You need to deploy an update to your mobile app. The new release is ready to go, but build issues, testing delays, and app store approvals slow down the delivery process. After two weeks, your users finally receive the updated app. In this talk, we'll cover the specifics of mobile DevOps and how you can build a continuous delivery process that supports the full range of mobile use cases. That's all without ripping out your existing CI CD infrastructure. We'll also discuss where traditional CI CD falls short and best practices for reliably building, testing, and releasing high quality mobile apps. With the right approach, enterprises can ensure an accelerated and continuous delivery of mobile applications. The end result is push button app publishing and real time updates directly to your users within minutes, not days or weeks. So what makes mobile DevOps unique? The DevOps methodology focuses on speed and quality. In traditional web development, once a fix has been identified, the process of integration and deployment can be near instant. A web app update has no real gatekeepers, and users simply have to refresh the page and sometimes reset their cache to enjoy that updated experience. Unfortunately, there are a few more obstacles when it comes to deploying mobile updates. A quick view into the traditional CI CD flow, we see some common checkpoints. We write the code, run unit and integration tests, commit our changes, test some more with functional testing, and if all looks good, we're pushing out to production. If any of our tests failed, it's back to writing some more code. Mobile is a bit different. Sure, we're writing code, running tests, committing changes, but we're also presented with the complications of code signing, generating native binary files, and the hurdle of delivering to the app stores. So how do these extra steps play out? Assuming a fix has been identified and implemented into your app, you still have to run it through a test environment, complete application testing, build your new app store assets, and submit to the app stores to get released. But then you wait. You can't just ship changes to users in 10 minutes like a normal web app. Getting a fix onto a user's phone can have a delay of a few days or more before the update is finally approved and published. In that time, users might grow frustrated with the mobile app experience and uninstall it altogether. To make matters worse, complaints about an app are broadcasted via the app stores for everyone to see. 
And as your new pending version sits for approval, more code is being added, and your code base drifts further apart from what's in the hands of users today. So we saw how application signing is introduced into the pipeline with mobile. And this is to ensure updates to the application are trustworthy, that they're coming from who the app stores and the users expect them to come from. But the provisioning profiles used in the process come with their own baggage. They expire yearly, and teams need to stay on top of them to ensure what they're using is up to date. Adding complexity is the fact that developers themselves may not be managing the profiles used in signing. This could be the responsibility of a whole separate operations team. By nature of the process we've discussed, bugs are tougher to react to, and they can't simply be squashed. If anything, those mistakes can be pretty hard to revert. Because of this, you need to have that much more confidence before you launch anything. And to have more confidence often means slowing down and ensuring your tests are rigorous. It also means that you may need to implement feature flags on those flaky features. That way, any issues that pop up can be more effectively removed or remediated. But without the right set of tools, this can require a great deal of additional engineering. Despite that testing is now more critical, it's also rather complicated, especially given the fact that most mobile app bugs and crashes are the result of an unexpected application state, and the permutations can seem endless. However, mobile devices are basically a superset of our modern computers with additional features and therefore complexities. We have various form factors and screen sizes, built-in GPS, ever-changing online, offline connectivity states, different operating systems, and a long tail of operating system versions. All of these variations can lead to those unexpected application states. So each of these have to be tested to some extent. Then there's also the issue of long tail app versions. According to a user poll conducted by Android Police, anywhere from 40 to 60% of users don't auto update their applications, meaning they either don't update at all or update on their own timeline. We simply can't force app updates on users. This leads to mobile developers being forced to support varying edge cases, different versions of their app, often for much longer than they had hoped for. And this makes it extremely difficult to completely eliminate those bugs and harder to introduce new features. With mobile, the end user has far more control than in the web app landscape. So engineers are going to spend a great amount of time supporting older versions of applications that might use outdated commands or rely on backend, uh, legacy backend functionality, adding to that overall complexity of shipping high quality mobile applications. Or you may even find them trying to engineer around this to ensure users always have the most up-to-date data and features inside of their application. Even though mobile applications are unique from traditional software development, it's common to see companies trying to map their existing CI CD solution for mobile app development teams. As we saw, there are many individual parts of the continuous integration pipeline that could be leveraged by existing infrastructure, but some tweaks need to be made. Let's talk about some of the most common additions and customizations that need to be considered for mobile. For starters, building mobile applications for the Apple App Store absolutely requires Apple hardware specifically a Mac. While many traditional DevOps pipelines run their builds through a Linux-based stack, dedicated Mac hardware is needed in order to compile an iOS mobile application. There's no getting around this. This leads companies to either provision special virtual machines with their hosting provider or jerry-rig a Mac in their IT closet, so to say. And all this creates friction around really scaling that iOS build process of the pipeline. In addition to all the edge cases discussed before, there's also varying degrees of tests required for mobile development. When developing new functionality, most teams run unit tests and integration tests as they would in traditional software testing. However, after a build is made, extensive, extensive functional testing needs to take place as well. Think about the multitude of mobile devices and the fragmented operating systems that people are using. Teams are forced to deal with differing test interfaces and tools, along with managing the distribution of alpha and beta releases to internal users, it all adds up to be quite difficult to do effectively. And once a mobile app has been successfully tested and built, it needs to be submitted to an app store. In traditional CICD, this is often a manual process. Because an app store submission is infrequent, it's easy to forget steps or have to relearn the process each time. 
from managing provisioning profiles and signing certificates to having the right asset requirements fulfilled to complete the submission workflow. Think about the app icon sizes or screenshots of the correct ratios. Traditional DevOps leaves it up to mobile teams to figure that out on their own. And unlike traditional CI, CD, mobile ecosystems are moving with or without you, whether you like it or not. There's no set it and forget it when mobile's in play. Although you may be able to get by with this in traditional web app setting, with mobile, the so-called zombie eight mobile apps get culled. Mobile apps eventually require some type of upkeep in order to remain available. And this is all dictated by Apple and Google. The changes they make to their guidelines directly impact the requirements for your mobile app. Because of these steady stream of changes, your infrastructure also needs constant updates. This means constant updates to build dependencies to ensure your app meets the exact specifications for admittance to the store. So what can your next steps be? How do we start to address these issues? Well, you could build it all out yourself. You could figure out how to integrate your version control system to automate the mobile build process, become a fast lane expert to trigger the right native build sequences, learn how to manage various environments and native configurations, work on the various app store asset creation scripts. Of course, there's also the need to uh, actually be able to ship the build artifacts to the app stores. And this is just to name a few. It's a lot. So DIY probably isn't the best bet. There's got to be a more ideal solution. So what do mobile development teams really want? They want a complete out-of-the-box mobile DevOps solution. Rather than creating and maintaining your own iOS and Android build environments, which requires keeping up to date with the latest build tools, operating systems, patches, and upgrades, teams should be able to rely on stable environments to generate native applications without any additional work. They should also be equipped with the ability to perform testing on various versions in different environments based on their audience and stakeholders. Being able to easily delineate between staging, quality assurance, production versions allow teams to monitor and evaluate their latest features. Developers don't want to be bogged down with man managing this infrastructure. They want it managed for them and kept up to date with the latest requirements. Also, there should be built-in automation capabilities within the mobile CI CD pipeline. No more manually running builds, notifying reviewers, and managing the approval process. Of course, the solution should have the capability to work with your existing CI CD platform of choice. And this would mean the ability to offload mobile specific tasks via triggers from your current CI CD command line. And finally, seamless app store publishing. Once the app has been built, tested, and validated by all stakeholders, it should be a breeze to deploy directly to iOS App Store and Google Play Store. And it really should be as simple as one click if not no clicks at all. So rather than DIY, we need off the shelf. With an investment in a tool like AppFlow by Ionic, all of the mobile DevOps pain points we discussed today are solved for you without any additional development effort. Instead, you can continue to work on developing your app and working through what makes it different from your competitors. The burden of mobile CI CD management is offloaded from your team to third party experts. And the resources you need for your app easily scale as your project grows. We see that the platform integrates with your version control system to watch for commits to various branches. And it enables teams to effectively manage their signing certificates and ensure they don't go out of date. You can monitor builds for your web, iOS, and Android deployments, viewing which environment the builds are deployed to, with options to deliver different builds to different environments on the fly. There's also options to manage your destination infrastructure to meet your pipeline's needs, as well as view the live deployments in each. And of course, various environments require custom variables. So there's an area to modify these two to set up different APIs, endpoints, secrets, based off where your mobile app is running. And don't forget, each of these steps can be automated from watching for commits to turning those into builds and deploying uh, to building binaries and deploying to the app stores. This is what an ideal outcome can look like for mobile CI CD. With that, I hope I've provided you some clarity around exactly what makes mobile DevOps so hard and how you can solve these challenges for your mobile development team. If you're ready to revolutionize your mobile app development process and think AppLow can help, we'd love to chat. Scan the QR code on the screen and fill in a quick form to contact our team. We'd love to answer any additional questions you may have, as well as give a live demo of the product and how it can be tailored to your company's specific needs. Once again, thanks so much for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. Cheers.